Luke chapter number 17. If you found your place and you're willing and able to do so, I would ask that you would stand tonight. And by standing, we'll reverence the reading of God's Word together. I want to begin reading in verse number 11. The Bible said, And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village... There met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto them, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. You can be seated, and I appreciate you standing as we read the word of God together. I want you to look with me down in verse number 15. The Bible said, And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. And I want to preach tonight, if the Lord will help me for just a few moments on getting back to giving God the glory. The Bible said that one turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. The Lord is on His way to Jerusalem and by design and also by desire he passes through the mist of Samaria. He goes that way to find out these ten lepers and cure them. One man said about the Lord that he has often found of them that sought him not. They were not seeking the Lord, but aren't you glad that He was coming in their direction? Oh, I'm glad when I couldn't get to where He was, He came to me. And I'm glad He found me and He healed me of that disease that I had in my life. These lepers become an example to all of us how that we are to come to Jesus. You'll notice, and I'll just briefly give you these and get to where the thrust of my heart is tonight, but they moved to the Lord hastily. The Bible said in verse number 12, and as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers. They moved in a very urgent way to the Lord. Hastily. They were not procrastinating. They were not delaying in their moving to the Lord. They needed help. And while he was passing by, that is the best time to get help and to get what you need for your life. And they moved in a very excessive speed or in an urgent way 
to receive help for their life. Oh, if you need help tonight, don't delay. If you need help physically, don't delay. If it's spiritual help, don't leave the service tonight before you move to the Lord and get help for your life. These lepers moved not only hastily, but they moved humbly. The Bible said in verse number 12 that they stood afar off. Ah, they recognized what they were and who he was. You and I ought to understand tonight who he is and what we are. Can I remind you and remind myself, I'm nothing and he's everything. I'm low, he's high. I'm weak, he's mighty. Oh, that we'd move to him very humbly in our approach. But they move honestly. The Bible said in verse number 13, they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. That's what they needed. That's what they needed in their life. They needed mercy. You remember the night when you needed mercy in your life. And it didn't matter who's around you. My God, you needed help from the Lord. And you lifted up your voice and cried out, have mercy upon me. You'll notice in our text tonight just three things and I want to enlarge quickly upon the last. You'll notice the hope that was revived in these verses of Scripture. Their condition that they had was of leprosy and it had depleted them of any hope outside of a divine intervention. Their hope was depleted. But all we find in these verses of Scripture that their hope is revived. They they are united in a chorus of voices that cry out for mercy in their life. They tell me as I've studied a little bit about leprosy that leprosy will uh, uh, attack the vocal cords and and can cause one not to be able to speak. But aren't you glad that somehow they reached down in in them and got enough energy to cry out for mercy? And, and, And knowing that Jesus was passing by, I revived the hope in their life. Oh, aren't you glad tonight that we do have hope in the Lord for whatever condition you may have. I'm glad the Lord is able to meet the need. Their condition had depleted them. The, uh, the causes of leprosy upon one's body uh, would, uh, would uh, deplete them of, of energy and, and that leprosy would spread throughout their body. And, and we know that leprosy spreads and leprosy separates and ultimately it will slay that individual if there is no kind of touch from an outside intervention. There's not only the hope was revived, but I want to say secondly, you'll notice the health that was restored. In verse number 14, the Bible said, and when he saw them, man, we ought to pause right there and thank God for a little while that he saw us and he still came in our direction. And all of our mess and in all of our sin, I'm glad he saw us uh, and he still came to where we were. I say hallelujah. He knows about us tonight. Lord of mercy. He said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. They had uh, their health restored. We I heard this morning in the morning service about how we serve a God of restoration. Aren't you thankful tonight that we have a God that can put things back into order and back into place? And so I'm thankful that their health was restored. What sin and what Satan and what self will deprive you of. I'm glad the Lord Jesus can restore that back unto you. 
And I want to focus tonight for just a few moments upon the thought of the honor that was rendered in these verses of Scripture. There's honor that is rendered. The Bible said in one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turn back. And oh, if there's anything that you and I ought to do in this day and hour, and I wish we could more and more is get back to giving God the glory. They turned back and with a loud voice they glorified God. In other words, they began to exalt in honor and to give praise. And it was in an extravagantly way they began to glorify God. Oh, everything that has been made has been made uh, uh, to give praise and honor and glory to God. The Bible said in Psalm 19, the heavens, the heavens declare uh, the glory of God. The Bible said in Isaiah 43, 20, the beast of the field uh, shall honor me. Uh, and may I remind us tonight uh, how that God will bestow upon us uh, His grace. Uh, and God will bestow upon us uh, uh, His goodness. Uh, uh, but He will not share His glory. Uh, oh no, He's not going to share His glory. Uh, and I'm thankful tonight that you and I have the ability, uh, uh, we possess the capability uh, uh, to give God the glory uh, for what He's done in our life the Bible said in Isaiah 43 and uh, 43 and verse number 20 uh, the Bible said the beast of the field shall honor me the dragons and the owls because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people or to my people my chosen uh, and the Bible said in Isaiah 48 and in verse number 11, for my own sake, even for my own sake will I do it, for how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory unto another. And I'm telling you, there's a lot of men that's trying to steal the glory and trying to have the glory. But I want to remind us tonight that you and I should give the glory unto God tonight. Notice. Notice the instigation. The instigation. There has to be a cause. There has to be a reason. There has to be a, a purpose for one to want to give God the glory. There's something that urged this one, this one out of ten. There was something that excited, that uh, incited this one. Uh, uh, you say, preacher, uh, uh, what do you believe it was that uh, caused this man? That What was the purpose? What, what was the reason that caused uh, uh, this one to say, no, uh, I'm not going to go uh, uh, to that priest, uh, uh, but I'm going to go to that priest, uh, and I'm going to offer up sacrifices of thanksgiving uh, and praise unto God. Uh, uh, you say, preacher, what would have caused uh, uh, that one to do that? Uh, well, I believe when they turned uh, uh, and was going uh, uh, to show themselves, uh, I believe that they were cleansed uh, uh, as the Bible said uh, I believe they looked down uh, and that skin that had uh, uh, that leprosy uh, uh, upon it those sores uh, and, and all of that stuff uh, uh, that was a result of leprosy uh, I believe they looked down and saw uh, uh, that that was gone uh, uh, you say preacher what what do you believe happened uh, I believe dear brother uh, uh, that it dawned on them uh, I believe it dawned on them uh, you say what dawned on them I believe it dawned on them hey I'm not what I used to be I'm not what I used to be I believe they looked down and say well I did have leprosy 
but I don't have leprosy no more. And I want to tell you on the authority of the word of God, if it ever dawns on you, you'll get back to him and give him the glory for what he's done in your life. I'm glad tonight that I'm not what I used to be. I see you tonight. I see you with your suit on. I see you with your dress on. But you ain't always been that way. Some of you used to be dopers and drunkards as myself doing things that was ungodly and evil and wicked. But thank God I'm glad. That's a thing of the past. I'm glad I'm not what I used to be. Thank God I'm saved. I'm saved by the good grace of God that ought to cause me to want to give him the glory had to be something you say preacher I ain't had a good day you don't know what my week has been like brother if we don't ever get another blessing in this life if we don't receive another favor from God I need somebody to help me right here have we been saved by the good grace of God and that's enough reason right there how to give him the glory for what he's done in our lives had to be something that instigated this then I want to say it was not only instigated but I would like to say that it was instinctive in this one Samaritan. You say, preacher, what do you what do you mean by it being instinctive? Uh, well, it was it was something that just come natural. Right. Yeah, right. Right. Hallelujah. I don't see nowhere in the text uh, uh, where he was pulled aside uh, and the brethren said now this is how uh, you ought to do it this is how uh, you ought to give him the glory and didn't have to go to no class to learn how to do it uh, I believe when he realized uh, uh, that he was not what he used to be uh, there was something on the inside of him uh, uh, that knew how to give God the glory for what he's done You don't have to you don't have to take a deer and teach him when he's hunted by the hounds or wounded by an arrow. You don't have to you don't know has to tell a deer now the best thing to do is to make your way toward the water brooks. No, you don't have to do that. That's, that's inborn inside of them. I want to tell you, you and I have something in us uh, that ought to ex- in, 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 in encourage us and, and incite us. Uh, uh, but it is instinctive in every one of us that has had a touch of God uh, upon our life to give Him the glory. It was instinctive inside of Him. You say, preacher, I don't... I don't do it like sister so-and-so does it. and I don't do it like the pastor does it. and I don't do it like the preachers do it. It's not how you do it. Just make sure you do it. Amen. I'm telling you, it don't matter if you cry or you raise both hands or you run an aisle. Just make sure you get back and give him the glory for what he's done in your life. He turned back and it was very instinctive that he lifted up his voice and gave the Lord the glory. Then I want to say tonight that it was not only instigated and it was instinctive but I'd like to say lastly it was instant. It was instant. I'm telling you, it was in that moment when he realized that he was cleansed, that he turned back. I mean, in that moment, it carried some weight. I I don't know about you preachers tonight, but I've had people go out of the church house on Sunday morning 
and, the, and God move in and it get good around the house of God and they come to the back door and they say preacher I should have I should have stood up this morning and testified and I've had them say this brother Doug if I get back tonight I'm going to do it and sure enough they held their word and they got back Sunday night and, and they was the first one up I've seen it happen they got up and, and they began to give God the glory but it did not carry the weight oh no it did not have the impact uh, that it could have had uh, if they would have done it when God wanted them to do it uh, uh, you and I ought not put it off uh, you say I'll wait till my song sung uh, or my preacher preaches uh, I tell you that's no time like right now to give God the glory for what he's done uh, in all of our life uh, God The Bible said, the Bible said this, that they lifted up their voices in verse number 13. And then in verse number 15, the Bible said they, that one turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. You say, preacher, it just ain't in me. That's not my personality to do that. Wasn't in my personality either. But when I got in those places back when I was lost, I didn't have no problem lifting up my voice. I didn't have no problem uh, uh, doing things that, uh, that you might not find me doing if I wasn't uh, uh, there. I'm telling you, uh, uh, these men were able to lift up their voices uh, uh, before uh, and what's wrong with them lifting up their voices now? Uh, if you've done it before, somebody help me right here. Uh, you ought to be able to do it now. Hallelujah. If you would do it in the club and in the bar, uh, you ought to be able to do it in the house of God. Uh, I say we ought to give God the glory for what he's done in our life. Is he not worthy? I'm telling you, what a God, what a God, what a God that deserves our praise, our honor, and our glory tonight. I'd hate to know. And I'm not, I'm not picking a fight. I'm not mean at all. I'd hate to know that I could go to a ball game I'd hate to know that I could lift up my voice, oh Lord, over a game that will not amount to nothing in eternity and then come to the house of God and sit on my hands and knowing what all God's done for me. Brother, you and I ought to be so happy tonight and give God the glory for what he's done. What a God, what a God that deserves the glory. And I, I say bless his name. What a God. Hallelujah. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.